Pastor Sherry from Grace Church, Dayton. Resurrection greetings to each of you. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. In the weeks leading up to Easter this year, like never before in the lifetimes of most of us, we have experienced the depths of dysfunction, separation, and death on so many levels. For many persons in our city, our nation, and around the world, it has been several weeks worth of Good Fridays, shall we say. And now it is Easter Sunday and we are still, in so many ways, experiencing dysfunction, separation, and even death. And so I bring you this simple Easter reminder. Where was the resurrection of Jesus first experienced? Where did those followers of Jesus, those women, first experience the resurrection of Jesus? Where did they first experience the joy of resurrection? The resurrection of Jesus was first experienced in a tomb, in a place of ultimate isolation, in the very dwelling place of death. And as Matthew tells the story, the women left that empty tomb experience with some fear and with great joy. In the very place of isolation and death, they experienced resurrection joy. Each of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, places the initial resurrection experience there in the empty tomb. However, the four Gospels vary very widely in other details of the resurrection story. Who first went to the tomb? What did they find at that tomb? And how did they come to connect the empty tomb with resurrection? For us in these days, experiencing a bit of the emptiness of isolation and death, I wanna spend a little time on this last point. How did those first visitors to the tomb of Jesus connect the emptiness of the tomb, the emptiness of a place of isolation and death with resurrection. In the Gospels of Matthew and Mark, there is one angel at the empty tomb, and in the Gospel of Luke, there are two angels at the empty tomb, and in these synoptic Gospels, it is the angel or the angels that are instrumental in connecting the emptiness of the tomb with the resurrection of Jesus. In Matthew, we hear the angel say, do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, for he has been raised, as he said. In Mark, the angel says, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. And in Luke, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. In this season, our own season of the emptiness of isolation and death, some of us are occasionally being visited by angels. Some of us occasionally hear the voice of an angel or two, or maybe even hear a whole host of angels. There are angels making sure that we are able to get food for our tables, supplies for our homes, medicines for our bodies, there are angels bringing messages of comfort, healing, and inspiration through phone calls, social media, cards and letters, maybe even an occasional surprise flower delivery. There are angels who are bringing new learnings and inspirations through old writings we are discovering anew. There are whole hosts of angels making music available on our radios, televisions, phones, tablets, cap computers, this is Easter. Listen to the angels. See the angels. Experience the angels. These angels are bringing us the same message they brought the women at the tomb almost 2,000 years ago. Jesus has been raised. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. In the midst of the emptiness, hear the angels and experience the joy of resurrection. Now in the Gospel of John, the story is told quite a bit differently. 
There is only slight mention of angels, and the angels do nothing to communicate the message of the risen Christ. In John's Gospels, the angels simply ask Mary why she is weeping as she stands there at the empty tomb. In John's Gospel, there seems to be a little more time for Mary to just be still in that very empty place of isolation and death. Then Mary has direct communication with one whom she does not initially recognize, one whom she presumes is the gardener. After a brief conversation regarding the emptiness of the tomb, the body that is missing, the presumed gardener calls Mary by name, and she recognizes that she has been talking with Jesus. There in the garden, at the empty tomb, Mary hears directly from Jesus and realizes that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Now some of us may begin this day shedding a few tears of our own in the empty places we find ourselves this Easter. We may stroll through our yard or garden or even sit in our chair and hear words from sources we don't immediately recognize. And then in the stillness, we will know. We will know God's voice calling out to us. We will know God's presence with us. We will indeed experience deep within us the presence of the risen Christ. This Easter lacks so much of what we have come to associate with the resurrection. Large family gatherings, fun-filled Easter egg hunts, glorious worship in this gorgeous sanctuary. However, the true beauty of the resurrection takes place in our hearts, souls and minds this day and every day. The beauty, the splendor, the wonder of the resurrection is the beauty of pain and suffering giving way to healing. The splendor of sorrow and doubt making way for reassurance and the absolute wonder of isolation and emptiness transforming into purposeful, inclusive community. This is Easter. This is resurrection. Without all of our outer trappings this Easter, may we be particularly attentive to the quiet angels around us. May we be particularly attentive to the still, small voice of God calling our name. May we be still and know the true healing beauty, the reassuring splendor, and the transformative community building wonder that is Easter. May we be still and know the depth of resurrection joy. Amen. Christ the Lord is